Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well today. It is the perfect weather for me. Nice and cloudy. <laughs> it's, guys, I just love this weather. I'm not saying I don't like the sun or sunny days, but I come alive when it's like raining outside or something like that. I mean, I love it for different reasons. Number one, I can just get cozy in the house, doing whatever. And then also, it also motivates me to go out and get stuff done. I will go and do shopping when it's raining. I will take my car to the dealership when it's raining. Just different things like that. You can get so many things done because a lot of people's not out. And that's what I love about it. And I just love rain. I don't know if I told you guys this, but when I was born, I was born, uh, I think it was after midnight or one something in the morning I was born. And according to the baby book, I, there was just a thundering and lightning and heavy storm going on when I was born. And who knows, maybe it was, that was just comforting to me because truly it is com comforting to hear lightning and thundering and raining and even rain on the tin roof because when I was growing up in Jamaica my grandmother had what we call zinc which you always say is a tin roof um, and it was just so comforting to me to hear that I could literally go to sleep to that so I still I would put on that stuff to go to sleep sometimes if you know I don't have on the word I'll sleep to sounds um, so I wanted to just tell you guys the importance of waiting, right? There's a lot more going on in the world, but one of the little traps that many believers are falling into is a trap of, um, you know, relationships and doing stuff the wrong way. You know, this world encourages us to taste before you buy squeeze before you buy and they will tell you yeah just go ahead and live together and it makes sense but why does it make sense it makes sense because it's what we want it's what we want we we want to do what we want to do you see and so yeah sure why not becomes our our way of approaching things, our way of um, approaching relationships, like, you know, yeah, it's okay, it's no problem. But guys, if you think about it, you can't even buy 99 cents bologna. You cannot get that out the store without buying it first. That's what I meant to say. Bologna is like one of them cheap meats. Those things are not even 99 cents. You cannot get that cheap bologna without first paying for it you gotta show the receipt that you bought it you can't walk out the store and so here we have individuals who how we have been convinced that while we'll pay for bologna you don't have to pay for me as a person an individual meaning people will tell you you don't need marriage you don't need a you don't need a marriage certificate. Just, you know, live together and try it out. And truly the reason why so many people are buying into this is because there's a lot of people, there's at least one person that does not want to commit. That's how come people end up living together. There's a fear of commitment, a fear of what they've experienced before, and just trying to follow what the world says is normal. People, if marriage doesn't matter, if it's not a big deal, then why not just do it? Because in their minds, it is a big deal, guys. People want to be able to be with you. Some people, they want to be able to be with you and easily walk away from you. You know, someone could be married, uh, could live with you. And if anything, they walk out the house. They walk out that apartment. They walk out of that condo. And there's nothing you can do about it. They can leave you high and dry with all the bills. They can leave the uh, the rent or whatever unpaid. They can do a lot of different things, guys. And um, 
no consequence. So sometimes people want the benefits. They want the, they want the, uh, they like the concept of marriage without the full commitment of it. Well, what if I'm making a mistake? If you feel like you're making a mistake or you don't know this person, that's the importance of courting them and getting to know them. People say, well, you don't, you're not going to know a person if you don't live with them. Yes, you can. You know a lot of things about their character before you live with them. I mean, really, what are you going to know? What else do you need to know when you're living with a person? Okay, you're going to know uh, what side of the bed they sleep on. You may know their habits, but it really has nothing to do with their character. You don't need to live with a person for their character to come through and you get a glimpse and a full on 3D revelation of who they are. But marriage, guys, is often a cop-out. It is, I'm sorry, just living together is often a cop-out. It's an easy way out to get some feels in and having the freedom to just break camp when they want to. The reason why sometimes people have so many issues with commitment is because of their past relationships. Ships. And that's the reason why it's important, guys, that we're just not dating everybody and going out with different people. We thought that it was normal in the world to do that. You know, you meet someone, you like them, you go out to eat, whatever, you date, blah, blah, blah. And then you break up and then you start to cycle over and over again. But that is not what God wants for us because that is the reason why so many people have problems committing because they they have a point of reference There's something that they've experienced. There's something that they've gone through. Someone who hurt them, who broke them, who really broke their spirit. And it brings a fear, a fear to commit because they have a reference. And so they come in with their ideas or they come in with a idea, you know, ideas and concepts as well as there may be someone that rocked their world sexually in bed and they will compare it to that person. They'll be like, well, I hope you're able to do like what David does. They won't say it out loud. I hope you're able to rock my world like um, Renee does. So guys, we're not meant to be all felt up and squeezed up and, and you know, just sweated on and moving on to the next thing. And so it makes it difficult because guys, a lot of times people, they want to have the option to leave. And if a person is not sure and they're like, well, just in case, that's all the more reason why you continue to date that person. You court them, uh, don't have intercourse with them because once you have, once you start having sex, guys, your mind is going to be all boggled, especially if the person is good in bed. If they're good in bed, you can forget it. You're not going to think straight. All right. And sometimes when that person's breaking up with you, that's why some people loses it because it's a soul tie. Sex is a sex is a soul tie. So just think about it for a second. If you want to go and buy a cup of ramen noodles or oodles of noodles, you're not going to leave that store until you pay for it. You cannot get it for free. So why is it that a pack of bologna, a gallon of milk, a pencil, a sticker, a book, noodles, we're prepared to pay for it. But when it comes to committing to you, in front of God and your family that can be given for free and we'll see come on guys you've got to be able to see see how the enemy has pulled an okie doke on us learn to do things God's way guys maybe somebody you're thinking about it I remember right before I was thinking of, I was struggling with a decision to allow someone to live with me. We were in a serious relationship, but I had so much hesitation. I remember 
And I remember sitting in my car and I was on YouTube and something came up specifically specifically that says do not live together before marriage. And I watched that and then I watched some other things and some other things. You know how it is. You watch one thing on YouTube and then another thread will come up and another. And I watched it and everything was known. And I remember calling up my partner at the time and just saying, you know what, I don't think this is a good idea and whatever. And, you know, he was kind of like, oh, well, you know, just let me know because, you know, I've already I've already uh turning my notice I've already done this and that and I remember him saying something like you know I said I just had some doubts and he said to me well the best way to get to know me and to understand how I am is for me to stay with you and you know it will be for me to live with you but you know it's up to you now guys I want to be clear right here I was not messing with you know what they would call some dusty dude that didn't have his own things and needed a place to stay he had his own place he's doing very well very successful as a matter of fact he made more money than I did but we just thought of living together getting to know one another and then at some point getting a home together let's continue he didn't give me any pressure and so I thought about it but I was very conflicted and I allowed it I was like, okay, you know, there was diff- all these different factors involved that I'm not really talking about right now. You have to watch all my other videos of my testimonies and my almost got married and all those things to really see. But it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And I can't just stick to one side and say, oh, I was a victim. I allowed that to happen because God showed me stuff from before. But when you're in sin, you do what you want to do. And it seemed nice. And there were elements of it that was great. In which, yeah, he was great. But there were other major disqualifying factors that kept being revealed more and more. If anything, what, what, I, what I suspected before when we were living together while it seemed as if okay all was well they were still there the they were still glaring evidence that was uncovered and so what do you do you go through the whole process of having a breakup move out or the person moves out and all these different things and i mean at this point i was just like yo i'm done i'm finished Okay, it wasn't something immediate. I tried. I want to know that I tried. I did really care about the person. But after a while, I reached this place. I was like, I'm finished. It's over. I'm done. And I just had in my mind the time frame. Yo, boom, let's just do this. And it seemed like there was not really any you know, he wasn't really telling me exactly when, but, you know, he'd already started doing little things to show that he's leaving, taking little things down here and there. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go through the agony and the whole process of coming in and this thing is down and okay, uh, you took your, took apart your bed in the extra room. You did this, you did that. And so I just got to the place. I was like, listen, boom, we're going to do this. Here's the time frame. Please get your things go because he was slowly moving it. Obviously, if you can move stuff, there's somewhere that you're going. And so that's what we did. So we would have broke up like that Wednesday. And I want to say or whatever day it was. And I was like, by that weekend, I was like, yo, wrap it up. And and that, that wasn't my intention at first, but he started to take things and move things. And so he's going somewhere. So for me, I was like, yo, obviously you got somewhere to go. Uh, if you need time, let me know. But obviously you're moving your things. So rather than just doing this little thing, wrap it up. And so that's what happened. But guys, the whole emotional thing about it. Now, by that time, the Lord had just given me a piece. So I was just wanting it to be finished because there was just this long drawn out thing that was going on. So I really had the peace of God and I had my my mind made up and my heart was fixed. I did not stay there to see him moving. I was just like I was still going to work and stuff like that. And so I was like, just make sure I was gone. Do what you got to do. Boom. It's done. But 
why did I have to go through that? I didn't, I should not have done that. He should not have to go through that. I shouldn't have had to go through that. No one should have to go through that. If you just wait on God, you obey the red flags that he shows you and don't fall for the okie doke of the world of test it, buy it, sniff it, squeeze it. You know, yeah, you cannot even go and take an apple out of the store without paying for it unless you're a thief. So follow, you know, guys, we got to realize our parents were right about that. To us, sometimes we'll think that they're old fashioned, but our parents knows what they're talking about. Even you may look and say, well, y'all didn't do that. That's not the point. That's how they know even better than us what they're talking about because they did it. They went to the fire. They got their hairline cinched. They know. So listen to your parents, whether you feel like they were a great example or not. Listen to them. Listen to these teaching guys and save yourself the hassle. Whoever is for you is going to be for you. You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to miss anything. All that's going to happen when you start living with that person, you immediately go down by 70%. It's like clearing self, 75% off. And guess what? Even with 75% off, that means you are there. They're getting all the benefits and haven't married you, they still don't want to put a ring on your finger. And then there's some, okay, they do marry you. They do put a ring on your finger. But now what's new about you? What's new about the relationship? You know what they look like, sound like, you know, their habits, everything. You already, you know, had intercourse many times before. Now it's life and pain bills. And sometimes that causes stress. And also because one or both of you are used to doing things that's, you know, out of God's will and doing things that are unlawful, meaning adultery, fornication. Sometimes it opens up the marriage for cheating because there's nothing to discover with you anymore. Yes, it could very much be a character thing, but oftentimes, guys, it's also because they are bored and they've done everything with you. And then their son never get married. The person goes, well, we're doing marriage already. Why we need to do the paperwork? Come on. So guys, that's my take on it. The Lord knows what he's talking about. He's trying to keep us from heartache and pain. He's trying to keep us from being hurt to the point we can't commit to the point that we'd be afraid of marriage because of what we've been through before. The things that we've been through, the things that we've seen and experienced and make us hesitate. Okay, so guys, trust him with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And you guys know some of you that is Proverbs 3 five and six. God bless.